Have you ever had laggy and unresponsive playback when editing videos? Well, if that has happened to you, then the reason is probably because you are using the wrong video codec settings, or you just have a bad computer, who knows? There are various factors that affect your video editing experience, such as the codec of the video, the bitrate, the keyframe intervals, etc. I will mostly focus on the video bitrate and the keyframe interval that you should use for your source videos. It all started for me when I got my 1440p monitor and started recording higher quality videos. I noticed that my editing software was lagging significantly. No matter what I did, changing the preview settings didn't work one bit. I also tried different recording codecs. At first I tried lossless, but the file size was massive and some of my programs didn't even recognize the codec properly. So I decided to switch to NVENC X.264 recording with Bandicam's recommended settings. The file size was nearly as big as lossless, but the video playback was as smooth as butter. However, it consumed so much hard drive bandwidth that I couldn't really use anything else in the hard drive without playback lagging. Bandicam recommended a keyframe interval of 1, as every frame is a full keyframe that the video editor processes quickly. With an increased keyframe interval, this will cause more processing to be needed, which can cause lag that you would experience when editing a video of a high keyframe interval. Soon after, I watched a video by Two Clicks Philip. When I first heard him talk about keyframes, I thought about using keyframes in order to reduce the file size. So I thought I would test different keyframe intervals in different quality settings in Handbrake. Here are my results. Note that the lower factor levels mean better quality and that the X.264 preset does not affect quality, but the faster you set it, the bigger the file size will be. To set your keyframe interval, you need to set a maximum keyframe interval and a minimum one, which you can set by entering these parameters. This is your maximum keyframe interval, and this is your minimum keyframe interval. I would set the minimum keyframe interval at half your maximum keyframe interval, unless you have a really small keyframe interval, which in that case, you would set it to the nearest whole number. I started off with a rate factor of 18, which is the lowest value that Handbrake recommends, and a keyframe interval of one, which means that every frame is a keyframe. The resulting video was kind of fuzzy and slightly pixelated, especially in the menu screen, and the text looked the worst, with this fuzzy mess surrounding it. This did not look high quality at all, although the file size was significantly reduced. So, I moved to a rate factor of 10, and there was a significant difference. It looked much better, although there was a small, barely noticeable amount of fuzziness. So I moved up to a rate factor of 14. The file size was barely changed compared to the other rate factor. And you could clearly see a fuzziness around the text. After that, I tried a keyframe interval of 2. And the fuzzy look was severely reduced, although the file size actually increased. And the playback was still quite smooth. So I switched to a keyframe interval of 4. And the difference was huge. The file size was significantly reduced especially at the rate factor of 18. And I personally couldn't tell a difference between rate factor 14 and 10. Quality was improved, and I couldn't see any fuzziness between the two. There was also a massive 6 gigabyte difference between them. So I decided to go for quality of 14 for my final settings and handbrake. There is a small quality loss compared to the original source file, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice if it significantly reduces lag and file size. And that is what it does. In conclusion, if you want to increase your editing speed, I would highly recommend compressing your videos using Handbrake. With a smaller keyframe interval, you also need to decrease your rate factor. A, ra a factor of eight would probably be enough if you are using a keyframe value of one. Although I personally would use a bigger keyframe interval to decrease my file size, unless I was using an SSD or something, as that would help with editing large files. If you want to use the settings I use, well here you go. Video codec is H.264. Frame rate is consistent. 
Although I don't think that setting really matters. X.264 preset is faster. H.264 profile is main. Level is 5.0. Extra options, key int equals four and minimum key int equals two. Quality is 14. Everything was done in 1440p quality. If you are using OBS, don't forget to add your audio tracks because otherwise that might not come up when you add the video file. So if you have multiple audio tracks when recording using OBS, um, just, just set your preset to two audio tracks and every time you render you just select the second track like this. So for example, let's just say that I put this video file in and then I go OBS. It doesn't select the second track for some reason, so you just do that and it should work. Like if if I want to just do things quickly, I just leave it ultra fast. Seems to be fine. Like it, there's no there's no quality lost. One thing which I forgot to mention is that if you're using footage with a high keyframe interval, um, such as for example when you're recording with OBS, it usually has a key keyframe interval of something like a second or like something like that. Um, the file size can be significantly higher, such as for example, this is the original OBS footage and this is handbrake uh, rendered footage. And the file size is about four times larger. So if you're dealing with already quite well compressed footage, you can, the file size can increase significantly. But it does give you the benefit of having much better editing time. So I'd still go for this method because, well, I've got plenty of hard drive space. Like, look, I got, I got like something like a terabyte left. So got plenty of space for recording, really. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.